in the world, Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon and Blue Origin and The Washington Post, you know, inexplicably on Friday, it was announced that after decades of endorsing presidential candidates to be uh, winners in elections, uh, they decided they were not going to have an endorsement. And late last night, uh, he dropped an op-ed in the pages of his own newspaper, The Hard Truth, Americans Don't Trust the News Media. And then he goes on to explain why he's not going to endorse anybody. Yeah, he says uh, he's going to defend the decision that creates, because he doesn't want to create a perception of bias. He says we must be accurate and we must be believed to be accurate. It's a bitter pill to swallow, but we are failing on the second requirement. Most people believe the media is biased. Anyone who doesn't see this is paying scant attention to reality, and those who fight reality lose. Reality is an undefeated champion. Uh, presidential endorsements do nothing to tip the scales of an election. No undecided voters in Pennsylvania are going to say, I'm going with newspaper A's endorsement. None. What presidential endorsements actually do is create a perception of bias. The Washington Post and the New York Times win prizes. But increasingly, we talk only to a certain elite. More and more, we talk to ourselves. I wow. think what he's calling for, Angela, is a realignment in media. They have lost the trust of the American people from the Russia collusion hoax uh, to the Hunter Biden laptop story to now the latest thing, which is Joe Biden's mental decline that they were so late to report on. And I think the endorsement, I don't think papers should ever endorse. I think it's hard to report on uh, daily life in America and hold politicians accountable and then endorse at the end. You put your thumb on the scale. This is really exciting in a way because it's, he's, they're not the first major newspaper to not, to not endorse. The LA Times last week said, I don't care what the editorial page wants. The owner said, I don't want you endorsing anyone. Right. USA they, Today. Yeah, USA Today followed up. So what happens is after this, there were mass resignations, mass some resignations. Yeah. The Post lost 8% of their editorial staff. They decided, I quit. Well, good luck. Try to get another job. You know, you guys stand for something. I hope you have something in your passbook savings account. Because I don't think this is any different. Write your opinion. The newspaper made a decision. Also, they're the owner of the company. I mean, show a little mm -hmm. respect. You're paid for your opinion. Write your column. Be the editor. Right. And when the owner who writes your checks, even though you're losing a ton of money, Jeff Bezos brought the Washington Post, knows he's going to lose a ton of money, makes a statement, and because he makes a statement about something he owns, they resign. I don't understand that mentality. So USA Today, the Washington Post, the L.A. Times, all said they're not going to endorse. And then you see this Media Research Center report. This not should surprise anybody here, but 85% of the coverage of Donald Trump is negative. For Harris, 78% is positive. How could you possibly expect to be looked at as fair? No one is wrong 85% of the time and gets at least 70 million votes. So let us ask you guys here in the audience. Let's see your hands. Who thinks it's a good idea that newspapers don't endorse? All right. That looks like almost everybody. Who would, who would like to see a newspaper endorse? I know uh, our parent company, uh, the New York Post, has endorsed Donald Trump to be president of the United States. Most newspapers do. It's just extraordinary. And this particular um, episode that started on Friday has cost the Washington Post 200,000 yeah. subscribers. They canceled their subscriptions, including uh, Liz Cheney, I saw on another <laughs> channel. That's right. But here's the, here's the thing. And when, what, the reason people are skeptical is because there was a story circulating that the announcement was made on Friday. And on Friday, the guy who runs Blue, Hori uh, Blue Origins, which is a Bezos' space company, he was meeting with Donald Trump in person. Next thing you know, they announce there will be no endorsement. The newspaper had already written one from, for Kamala Harris. And that's why a bunch of people quit, because they were ready to do it. And it looked like it was something fishy. Jeff Bezos, in his op-ed, said there was no quid pro quo. We're doing this so that people can make up their own minds. But at the same time, it just looks well, to a lot of people like... Uh, those two things happened exactly at the same time. He says it was a coincidence. Jeff Bezos said he didn't even know that Blue Origin was meeting with Donald Trump. And he said, I right. sighed when I found out because I knew it would provide ammunition, which it has, to those who would like to frame this as anything other than a principled decision. Right. Right. So he didn't know about it. But I would love to see a show of hands. How many of y'all have ever voted for someone only because... 
the Washington Post has endorsed or another newspaper is exactly a good it doesn't voice. really yeah. matter yeah. I love Amazon that matters to me yeah. so I care more about that than the newspaper's decision you know, so, so what I hope in the big picture we should add to the Minnesota Star Tribune Governor Waltz, they will not endorse. The Tampa Bay Times says they're not going to endorse. I actually love this. I right? think it's good for journalism. I think in the big picture, if Trump is able to win, he never had one day where he could have a honeymoon and treat it fairly. You don't like the Muslim ban. You don't like his tax plan. Go ahead. Write something bad. Say something bad. But every day to make up something negative, to lead your newscast, your news channel, with 95% negative news about somebody while they're trying to govern, Maybe this could be somebody trying to uh, lay the groundwork to treating him fairly. Should he be? Uh, should he be a winner? Weren't y'all shocked when y'all found out it was the Washington Post? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is this saying that maybe they're recognizing that 50 percent of America thinks differently the than they do? Ownership is, but the reporters still aren't. I mean, the hyper right. You're right. ventilation that they, you would think they endorse Donald Trump. They just decided to say, look, we're just going to stay out same of it. Same with the team. Street, after right? all, same and it's the same thing that we we're seeing when they covered the rally that happened on Sunday. They called it a Nazi rally. All of these reporters right. are putting their hand on the scale, saying things that are just not true. And it goes to the former right. president's uh, point that when he's talked about the messaging from the Democratic Party, he says that it's putting them in danger. Watch. Kamala is now doing something much worse than what she was talking about. The newest line from Kamala and her campaign is that everyone who isn't voting for her is a Nazi. Now, the way they talk is so disgusting and it's just horrible the way they talk. And they, they don't mean it even. They just want to do, you know, they think that we, they can sell. They've called me everything from a mad genius looking to take over the world to a very, very stupid person. I've covered from stupid to mad genius that will eventually succeed in taking over the world. Now, these are bad people. This is the kind of outrageous rhetoric that has resulted in two assassination attempts in the last three months, probably. I, I could say that that's probably right. Okay, so Donald Trump, uh, that is him uh, last night in Atlanta. Today he's going to have a press conference. You will see it live uh, here at the Fox News Channel. Uh, I think it's at 11 o'clock this morning. 10. At 10 o'clock. And uh, so Bill Hemmer uh, will be able to have breakfast, I think, uh, during that live event. Uh, when they when they take that, and as usual, Dana plays. Right, she's something they Absolutely, have to work out. and then uh, Kamala Harris is going to be going to the ellipse, where she's going to remind people as she makes her closing argument. They say right. about what happened on January 6th, where she's going to be right where Trump was. Uh, back in the day. And Eric Trump came out and said, look, they're trying to be much more positive. If you look at the president's address, 75 minutes on Sunday, much more positive. Uh, Eric Trump came out to Daily Mail. He says uh, he would want nothing to do with the prosecuting Hunter Biden or Hillary. He doesn't give a damn. He wants these games to end. He wants a safe, prosperous world and a fruitful society. He wants to get back to a country that is actually functional, that wins on everything we do. He wants to win on education, safety, economy, and military. He does not want to go to into senseless wars. He wants the respect to the entire world that is the focus and if everything goes according to the prompter it's going to be much more positive leading to next tuesday well we know he could Steve. have under the department of justice gone after hillary clinton and he decided right that it wasn't best for the country so we know what he did the last four years i like that i like moving forward yeah. can we just stop yeah. with but that already been, he even said uh, he was open to partner Hunter Biden as well. Yeah, so yeah. so maybe go. Hillary, maybe Kamala says, if I win, I'm going to make sure Donald Trump's cases go by Did the Did y'all hear yesterday yeah. he said he wants to support a tax credit, too, for all of us who have paid for caregivers for right. our parents mm -hmm. or for someone that you love? Does Indeed. that include does that include uh, child care, too? It would be Not wonderful. Sure. I think that's separate. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.